Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Michael Bransawatsky. I uh, oversee the Pickup Family Neurosciences Institute at Hogue. And today the topic is multiple sclerosis. I am very privileged to have as uh, our guest uh, the head of our multiple sclerosis program, Dr. Yasir Jassam. Dr. Jassam is uh, a subspecialized neurologist in the field of multiple sclerosis and neuroimmunology with training at uh, the National Institutes of Health in, in that area. Tell us the role of those objective uh, uh, criteria in the diagnosis of MS. Sure, so um, this is actually a very important point in, in multiple sclerosis. Until this very day, we don't have a single blood test that tell us whether or not we have MS. Not a single blood test? Not a single blood test, believe it or not. Okay. The best we could do is to look at the patient MRI and even those are limited in assessing whether or not the abnormal spots we see on these pictures are actually MS or something else. It just by judgment and pattern and the way they look, we can make a best judgment that this is an MS lesion. Now, there are some specific biomarkers, and I know we're working with a company called Octave that has some innovative uh, solutions for biomarker blood test uh, samples and then analyzing those blood tests for the spe more specific biomarkers. Tell us about that. Well, I think th this field is becoming more and more interesting. This is the intriguing future for multiple sclerosis. In, in the work, in the huge amount of research that's being done in MS, they found that certain blood tests, but not only one, can indicate whether or not there is ongoing inflammation in the brain and the spinal cord. And they found that a combination of those tests, a combination of these blood tests, can actually give you a pretty good idea about how the patient is doing on their medication or even without a medication. That's the future. We need more biomarkers. That's what this company is doing, Octave is doing, to try to give us a little bit of a more accurate picture about how the patient is doing on their treatment. But think about it this way. Think about those nerves are being copper wires. And the myelin, what we call myelin, is actually the insulation tape around these copper wires. For some reason, our own bodies mistake this insulation tape for a bug and starts attacking it to destroy it. Once they destroy it, the copper wire is bare. And then the immune system continues to attack this copper wire until it's completely destroyed, so there's no more electricity going through it. That's so it's more than just damage to the insulation layer. It's Actually, damage to the, the wire. Actually, the wire itself gets destroyed. That's correct. And that's why sometimes people who try to do remyelination, if you do it too late, putting back the insulation tape around the damaged wire doesn't do anything because the wire is gone those little abnormalities we do see on MRI are progressing or getting better? Can you talk a little bit about the challenges uh, of that? Yes, so we actually come a long way in looking at how MS is doing, but we still lack a lot of information. When the patient comes to the MS clinic, we do our best to see if the patient is doing well or they're progressing. And we do this by examining them, talking to them, looking at their MRIs, but the MRIs usually don't tell us everything. Sometimes the spots, which we call lesions, on the MRI look the same. Or at least, with the limited technology we have with MRIs, they look the same. There are recent technologies that actually show you that these spots that look the same are not. They're very, very slowly enlarging over years and years and years, and that's what drives progression. There's actually new blood tests that tell you why the patient might look stable to you, there's an underlying inflammatory process that's only detected by very specific blood tests that tell you actually this patient is not doing very well. Because although the patient is feeling fine now, by the time you figure out they were not doing very well, it would be too late to do anything about it because you have missed that opportunity to intervene early. And that's now the time is brain. That's a very known common notion in stroke and in MS it applies as well. It's very important to have a standardized approach to the imaging process and the blood draw process, making sure you're analyzing the brain and the blood work the same way reproducibly and have a standardized approach to measurement and structuring the report to the patient and the physician in such a way that they can discern whether there is progression, stability, or sometimes regression. 
One of the things I really like about the uh, approach our friends at Octave have taken is that uh, they have standardized a, a higher degree of sensitivity and specificity into acquiring the MR data and then uh, structuring the analysis uh, to help the radiologists keep their uh, observations and their reports standardized. And there is no one system capable of gathering all this information. The good thing about the new technology that Octave brings to the table, it basically gathers all these in one consistent report that is produced using the most advanced technologies to look at a new blood test. And more importantly, it follows the patient day-to-day -day activity and it alarms their provider if there is an incident that needs attention before they actually have to wait and come and tell us about it in the clinic, or they have to donate telling us if they think it's, it's actually significant. And I think for the doctor to sit in an appointment with a patient and have all these information listed in front of them in one or two sheets, that will be revolutionary in the field of MS control. So that's a considerable amount of uh, uh, comprehensive data in one blood test uh, aimed at specifically characterizing the disease process. Indeed. Indeed.